the view. So the view, if, if the user click a uh, um, uh, 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 perform the mouse click on the button, the view will send these actions to the view model. The view model will receive the action and start reflecting these actions on the actual model. Okay. So as we said, we have the view, view model, and model. Uh, at one end, the view is pure display. It, it's your, it is your WF uh, form. It is your server light uh, page or user control. On the other end, the model is pure data. It can be, as we said, a database, uh, entity framework, uh, link to SQL, uh, WCF servers, or what, whatever, whatever technology you use to, uh, to store your data. In the middle is the view model. So what we need to do is that in the view, uh, we need, you know, uh, some people think that uh, NVM button is here to, you know, to remove all the code behind. And this is the ultimate case, is that you have a view with no code behind. And you, you have a web form or server light form when you double click and see the code behind, you, fi you, you find an empty code bar. This is the optimal case. But you don't have to you know, perform this 100%. In some situation, you will end up with a couple of lines of, of code in the code behind. This is OK. And, uh, 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 as long as this uh, code doesn't have any business logic or something. So what we need to do is minimize the amount of code uh, in the code behind. Because the code in the code behind is hard to test. How are you gonna, you can try a unit, uh, uh, unit test to test the UI, right? You can write a unit test to test a function or a business logic or something, but you cannot try a code to test the code behind. So you need to minimize the code behind. And in the meantime, you, you, need, uh, you, uh, you, you need to uh, uh, create the code and uh, using XAML, the view, sorry, using XAML, because XAML has many tools for uh, like expression plans. So you, you need to invest in your, uh, XAML, uh, in your view by uh, creating the view entirely in, in XAML. Okay? Uh, the communication between the two, the view model ha has a reference it can, uh, to the, the, uh, the model. And the, uh, the view has a reference to the view model. So it's like a top-down uh, relationship. So the view access the view model, the, the view model access the, the model. The interaction between the, the view model and the, the view is through data binding. So what happens is that is your view says, my data context is the view model. So it means that I will be, uh, yani, uh, the object I'm using to, uh, uh, to, uh, yani, to, as a source of data is this view model. And through data binding, we will see how uh, we can achieve that. So enough of this here. Let's see uh, an actual uh, demo. OK. Uh, let's run the application. What I have here is a very simple server light uh, application. Uh, I have a list of customers. I'm displaying them in a combo box. And whenever I, I select a customer, I, I see uh, the details here in the uh, form. And I can uh, edit and delete this customer. It's a single page, a server light page. Let's see the code behind this. So let's start with, well, this is actually not an not a MVVM application. It's a normal server light application. So basically, we have a database, uh, uh, Adventure Works database. SQL Express, and we have Entity Framework model. We are only using the customer uh, table, okay? So this is our model. Uh, uh, we, we have also a, a WCF service. This WCF service has uh, only uh, uh, two methods. Oh, sorry, it's uh, three methods. One for retrieving the customers, it returns a list of customers, and one for saving the customer, and another one for uh, getting the specific customer. So this is on the server side. We have uh, entity framework model, and we have a WCA service that exposes this model. On the client side, the server light application, our page, uh, and the server light application has a reference to this WCA service, okay? And in our code here, we are using normal code behind. So in, in, the, in the load, we are creating an object to reference as a service. And we are calling get the customer. We are calling uh, this uh, function asynchronously. 
And whenever the result comes from the server, we, we use this uh, list of customer and bound it to the uh, combo box, okay? And uh, whenever we click the update button, we, we call the web service and update the customer. And the same thing whenever we call uh, delete button, we call the web service and uh, delete uh, the customer, okay? And here we are, uh, the controls, we have the, the combo box here, we, 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 uh, we set the item source property in the code, and the, the other control, the direct controls, is bound to this uh, combo box. So if I go here and see the, uh, the text of this uh, text box, you can see that the source of uh, the, the text is the element, the element called combo, uh, customer combo box. We are binding the customer bo uh, combo box to the selected item. So it means that this text box will display the, uh, sel the, the first name property of the selected item in the combo box. So that's why we, whenever we change the selection in the combo box, the text box is automatically is reflected. Okay. So as we said, the problem in this application is that we, I mean, we have here a lot of code that we cannot test, right? Our view here is dependent on the WCF service. I mean, the, 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 the code behind contains uh, explicit references to the WCF service. So we need to uh, separate, separate this and present uh, the NVVM model. Okay? So what I will do is that I will uh, remove all the code behind. And also here on the uh, screen, I will remove the uh, uh, click handler. Okay. So what I did now is cleared my server light application totally. So my view now contains just uh, simple controls. Let's start implementing the view model, uh, the, the NVVM model. Uh, model. Uh, uh, we will start by creating the model. So. The model will, will be available on the server. So in our case, we said that the model is a, web, a WCF service. So we have the model ready. But uh, we need to reflect this on the client. Now the client has a reference to the WCF service, right? Uh, I can go ahead and call the service uh, immediately. I can create a new instance of the service client and call the message directly. But I want to in introduce another level of abstraction. So, what I will do is that on, on my server light application, I will add a new class. This is better. Okay. Actually, I will make this interface. I will call it the customer provider. And uh, I will add two methods in this interface. One is for retrieving the customer. It will take a callback function. So I will say get customers. This method will be uh, executed asynchronously. And whenever the result uh, arrived, I will call the, the callback function. And the same thing for the customer. Okay, Save customer. It will take the customer to be saved to the server. And whenever the save is succeeded or failed or completed, I will call the callback, okay? So this is an interface. I need an implementation for this. So I will add an implementation, a class that implements this interface. Okay. And this implementation will do what? It will go call and call the WCF service. As you can see, it will uh, create a new proxy for the, for the service, and it will attach the, the callback here to the completed event and call get customer is in. Okay. So why did I introduce this level of abstraction? Because it would be easier if if I if I work it on the on the, abst yani the abstract uh, in, uh, interface because. Is it, yani I can go ahead and have a reference from my view model to the to the actual WCF service. But what if, if I want to uh, uh, any change the model? Instead of using a WCF, I want to use uh, a file system. 